Hello, everybody. This is Jake Stenziano, host of the Wheelbarrow Profits Podcast, here with my co-host, the multifamily mentor, the coach, the chef, the father of six, the best-selling author, the G-Daddy, Gino Barbaro. Gino, how's it going? Mr. Stenziano, doing good. Got power back, bro? Got power back. I got some guys working outside right now, so we're going to see how this goes, but I think we're going to be all right. Uh, today's guest is the founder of LeaseLock, Riken Cool. LeaseLock is the first nationwide rent payment insurance program. It helps property managers like ourselves convert more leases, drive more revenue, and eliminate losses. So without further ado, Riken, welcome to the show. Thank you, guys. I appreciate it. Thanks for the warm introduction. Yes, and uh, let's, let's get this thing kicked off. Tell us a little bit about how LeaseLock got started and, and what the whole thought process was behind, uh, behind starting this. Yeah, uh, Lisa Slot got started because of a, a personal situation that happened to me. Um, I I started my life out flying. Uh, I was in the Air Force and um, was a flight instructor and then flight instructor on the outside for the FAA. And um, I had taken a year off uh, basically to teach flying just as a hobby out in Palm Springs. And then I got another real job back in business in uh, New York with Viacom. And when I went to move back to New York, the building that I went to move into told me that I did not qualify to live in that building because I didn't make 80 times the monthly rent, eight zero times the monthly rent last year on my tax return. And I said, well, I didn't make five times the monthly rent last year. And I said, but let me just give you all the money up front for the 12 months of rent. And I said, I have perfect credit and you can look at my bank account. And they said, no, you don't understand. You don't qualify to live here. And um, that was where the whole idea for me of LeaseLock was born, um, that there should be a place where any renter can go who wants to lease anything at any level for any reason that they do not qualify financially. And the LeaseLock as a company would be the ones to already have a relationship with the property manager where the property manager trusts in lease lock to indemnify that property manager should the renter default. So lease lock is basically saying to the property manager, let, let us take on all the risk. If you want this renter in and you don't want to hassle that renter with these old antiquated ways of collecting extra security deposits that you don't want to manage and the, the old way of asking for a cosigner if you want to instead let let this fall into the hands of a responsible form of insurance that you don't even have to pay for, then come to lease lock because you know, we're taking all that worry out. You don't deal with all that, uh, the, the co-signers that you're probably going to have to chase down. You're probably not going to get the money from the co-signer. Uh, you're going to be able to mess with their credit, but what good is that going to do you? You're not going to get your money back with lease lock. If you sign up for a $30,000 lease over 12 months, you know you're going to get $30,000, and all you have to do is tell your renter to go get a lease lock. You don't even have to pay for it. So, Let me, let me I guess, jump back. I hear Air Force. I hear FAA. I hear Viacom. To me, that does not sound entrepreneurial <laughs> at all. I mean, I'm sorry. I mean, how did the entrepreneurial spirit, I guess, bite you? Give me a little background of your story and like, you know, how you came from and how you just grew into this, into this position. Yeah, you know, um, I, I come from nothing. I grew up in a trailer park, and um, I got into the Air Force Academy out of high school. And uh, my grandmother was a pilot in World War II. She was one of the WASPs, and she, she taught me to fly when I was nine. And so it's just always been in my blood. Um, but when I got out, when the Air Force stationed me out in Los Angeles, um, I kind of ran with the Hollywood crowd for a little while. And this casting director asked me if I wanted to be on The Amazing Race in 2003. Uh, it's a race on CBS around the world for a million dollars. And um, I, was, I had just come out of the Air Force and had decided that I wanted to be a flight instructor. So I started my own flight instruction company. Oh, okay. And, and I decided I wanted to uh, charter private jets. So I started a private jet uh, charter brokerage company. And so I... I I always worked the entrepreneurial spirit and mm -hmm. in, in the things I wanted to do. Um, when uh, I did the amazing race and then I won, and um, that was huge for me because I, I ended up writing a book uh, just about my whole life, Air Force experiences, and um, 
and just kept going. I started a jewelry line, a clothing line, a cologne line. <laughs> so <laughs> I've done a lot of, um, it doesn't seem like it, but I've done a lot of entrepreneurial stuff. The, the, the Viacom world was uh, from, from all the entertainment. I, I, I got a lot of hosting jobs. Uh, I ended up on Days of Our Lives and Young and the Restless. And Y&R. Then, uh, my mom loves Y&R. I'm going to have to ask you about this. <laughs> yeah. And then I, I got to do uh, Frasier in the 11th season and then the Drew Carey show. Um, so I, I've, I've done a lot in my life. I'm 43 years old. Um, this was a personal experience that uh, hit me right here uh, that, that started Lee Slock. And, uh, you know, it's amazing because this is the first time in my life where for the past five years I've focused just on one thing that has never happened to me. Um, I'm really passionate about this. Uh, and it's turned into a, um, a socially responsible business. Um, we are helping so many people find housing that normally wouldn't get it. And we're making it easy on them and we're making it so it doesn't bust their ego. Um, a lot of people have fallen down financially and they're now back on their feet and Lee Slock is is willing to take a risk on those people who show us through our own underwriting that yeah you messed up on some credit cards and cell phone pill, bills but you're a rent payer and now with all the data that we keep bringing in we can tell if someone is a rent payer better than anybody else and we're not looking at credit reports uh, we're looking at a lot of other things especially bank statements spending habits um, we're developing a proprietary system to protect ourselves and our landlords and to drive the cost down for our renters. That, that's cool because the entrepreneurial, uh, I guess, spirit is, is that total definition of you found the problem in the market and you look for the solution. So, I mean, this whole company sounds exactly like what an entrepreneur would do. You find the problem, you look for the solution. Was anyone else doing this at the time when you got into it? Yes, there was a company, and there still is, there was a company called Insurant in New York, uh, but they were only in uh, New York, New York City. Um, now, I believe they're in New Jersey and, uh, and Massachusetts. Um, I, when I started LeaseLock, I knew what they were doing. They were using a surety bond system. It's, mm -hmm. it's a little bit different, and they had to be admitted in each state. Um, I set out to make LeaseLock a nationwide company from the outset. That's probably what took so long to really get us off the ground is because insurance, as you, as everybody knows, is such a highly regulated industry. And I had to make sure that we were compliant to, to work in all 50 states. It was no small task um, to get that all set up and so that now we can service anyone anywhere in the U.S. So you got the idea. First of all, did you get the apartment 80 times or they just asked so you couldn't get it? Yeah, I got someone to co-sign for me who's a friend who was uh -huh. like whatever who knew me uh, who did make 80 times a monthly rent um, and I, I got the apartment but uh, you know now the the uh, the property management company that had that made me a conditional approval is now a lease lock customer. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. That's awesome. So yeah. Walk us through the whole process of uh, that entrepreneurial journey. I mean, okay, you got the you got the inspiration, you got the motivation. What were the first few steps to get the company off running, and how have you gotten it to grow from there? Oh man, um, the first step was um, <laughs> to find out the hard way that uh, investors are a lot more savvy than I am, um, <laughs> and that the terms that they created um, for me. Uh, played on my um, played on my optimistic spirit that oh yeah you know I'll give you this amount if I if I do this well and I'm of course I'm gonna do that well no I didn't you know it t takes a long time to build a company and so those investors got the better deal in the end um, so it, it was all about raising money at first uh, I took the idea to mucker in uh, in Santa Monica California the Silicon Beach it's like a, a premier incubator there and I told them about the idea and the day that I brought the idea in, one of the founders of mucker had received an email from his friend in London who was a millionaire who needed a co-signer to live in an apartment in Santa Monica because he Beautiful. had no US credit and they were like this is crazy he just emailed us asking us to co-sign for him I said that's exactly who I want to help I want to help you know, people who are rent payers, but they just don't have the credit here. So we have a lot, you know, 
that started building our market. It was, you know, we have a lot of uh, people from foreign nations, a lot of students who have no trade lines on their credit report to speak of yet. Um, we, we you know, Parents love us because 90% of uh, student housing has to have a co-signer by a parent and they hate it. They don't want it on their credit, especially when four students live in like a, an on-campus mm -hmm. apartment house. Because if they screw up, it ends up on the parents' credit. The parents are like, here, I'm going to buy a lease lock for these guys. And if something goes wrong, you guys cover it and it's not on our credit. And, uh, and in the meantime, we report the, the rent payments of that renter to the credit bureaus. So the parents like that we're already building a credit file for their kid and in a pretty big way. Um, for people who have had bad credit, we're raising their credit scores between 50 and 100 points within a year time span. This is a huge deal. Um, this can take someone from a subprime level to a prime level to uh, buy a car, uh, buy a house. Um, it's it's a big deal. So, who do you think your typical avatar is as far as your you know your typical customer on on lease lock? Um, it it it. It spans the gamut. It's a good question. I think um, you know when you're looking at lease lock student. Uh, you know, obviously it's it's all students, and and this is a big market right now. We're finding most of our student housing property management companies they've gone from a lease lock standard plan. We now we've created what's called lease lock total, where the the building says everyone who comes in here must be on a lease lock. And so what we do is we work with the building, we get all of their default rates, we run some actuarial analysis, and we can drastically reduce the rate for each particular renter. And then they they you know they pass the, the fee on to the renter, and all the renters um, get a really low fee at move in, and um, and the whole building is protected. So anything goes wrong, not only is the building protected from lost rent. We'll protect them for damages to the units as well. I think we got caught up in Y&R a little bit because what I just realized is we're talking about lease lock and, and assuming everyone knows exactly what it is. So let's just let's just pull the e-brake real quick and just say this is exactly what lease lock is because I feel like we've been going on about it. We know about it because we're customers, but I just want to make sure that we, we get very explicit with this so we can tell everybody this is exactly what lease lock is. Yeah, and uh, and my apologies. I should. No, that's on us. That's on us, not you. So. Okay. Yeah, lease lock is is the first nationwide rent payment insurance, and which is free to property managers. And the way it works is, a a renter goes into the leasing office and says, "I would like to rent here." They fill out an application. The leasing uh, office says. We really want to rent to you, but you just don't look strong enough financially, and so we must put you in our conditional applicant pool. Conditional applicant pool just means either they need to put down an extra security deposit or they need to go get a cosigner. And uh, in that case, we always ask the building to say, instead of uh, a cosigner or an extra security deposit, why don't you choose the responsible form of insurance through lease lock, ask them to get a lease lock, we will make sure that the renter's move-in uh, cost for, le for the lease lock is cheaper than one month's rent security deposit. So that's what we guarantee. So, you know, we find that most renters are not so gr happy about putting down extra deposits that they'll get back 12 months later. They just want to move in for the least amount of money possible. Low barrier so, entry, yep. Yeah, we, we, want, we want to help the landlord get the renter to buy the lease lock because it, it only helps the landlord if the renter buys the lease lock. The landlord is more protected, so we try to like incentivize this so that it's cheaper than the, other, the landlord's other option, because um, then everybody's happy. Landlord doesn't have to manage the security deposit. Landlord is covered for the full value of the lease. So uh, our biggest complaints from landlords was price in the beginning, and so we have done everything possible to continue to lower the price for the renter. So how do you sell this to a, to a company? Jake and I are bought in. What would be your, I guess, your sales pitch to them to say, listen, this is an awesome product. You need to get this product. Yeah, I, I think the sales pitch is, um, look, if the renter defaults on, on the lease, you're going to go through, they're either going to skip and then you're going to have to re-rent the apartment. You're going to lose money while you're re-renting, not with lease lock. While, while the apartment's empty, we're going to continue to pay you every month until the end of the lease 
or until you re-rent it, whichever happens first. That's huge. And it's an office system. You let us know when you re-rent it, and you know we'll stop paying the, the rent. Um, and, and also, some of our bigger property management companies are now taking these these numbers that we're creating for them, the bottom line zero default numbers, and they can take those numbers to the bank uh, and say, look, uh, look at my bottom line. I've now reduced my default losses to zero. That translates for you know property investors into uh, dollars that they can more easily get from a bank for construction projects, for reconstruction projects, improvements. Um, so, you know, it it really is a win win for everyone. And the only person who's really, I guess, losing anything is the renter who has to pay for the fee. But you know, this is the way the world is. Set they're not up. losing; they're gaining because, in some instances, they could be rejected or denied access to the apartment, or have to get a co-signer for the eighty times rent. So, it's a, I think it's win win all around. Yeah, we're, what we're doing is making it so the person who's bringing the risk to the situation is paying is paying the, the basically the, the toll, the premium, the risk yep, that they brought, and nobody else suffers anymore. So, Rankin, who should sign up for lease lock? Um, so we we and sign up is a good word. You know we. We don't have a sales team. We have an enrollment team because we're not selling anything to landlords. We have to enroll landlords, and it's a it's a simple 20 minute process to enroll. And um, it, it's anyone who has conditional approvals, anyone who has ever had a renter come in and they say, "I really want to rent to this person. I don't want to say, don't let the door hit you in the ass on the way out." Um, I really want another option because they just don't have a cosigner in their family or friends, and they don't they don't have any more extra money to move in other than, you know, maybe enough for the lease lock fee. They don't want to put down extra deposits, but you really want to rent to them, then come to us. We are not here to push renters into your properties that you don't want. If you don't want the renter, we don't we probably don't want them either because they're probably going to default. But if it's someone who you just want to give a chance to and you're feeling like, I just need a little extra assurance, then all all those property management companies or property owners should enroll with LeaseLock. And you don't ever have to use us. If you enroll with us, just have it there in your back pocket as an option. And you know we're not telling you you got to do everybody unless you're on LeaseLock Total, which is a whole different animal with LeaseLock Student. Um, but yeah. So why do, why do people still use that antiquated process of security deposits and co-signers that just do nothing for landlords when you have lease lock now? You know, my answer to that is that it's because it's always been done that way. Um, and that we, we find this really prevalent in insurance and property management, which are the two industries that we run in besides tech. Um, we're, we're, we're seeing um, – if you look at the insurance industry right now, it is really being shaken up by uh, companies like Lemonade um, and LeaseLock who are built from the ground up as a new millennial type of company. We're completely paperless, fully electronic. Uh, you know, All of our applications and claims processes are done like immediately lightning fast and on apps and computers. And you have uh, big insurers who are not, they're not, catching up to the game and they have all the money to do so but they're so ingrained in the way that they do the old you know the old process that they just they can't get around it we 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 contracted out with a claims payment you know like a tpa a third-party administrator for claims and they were part of that old insurance establishment it lasted about two months it was just there was no culture mesh between lease lock and this old style company it takes them, you know, two and a half weeks to pay a claim when we're saying, no, 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 we want to pay claims in 20 minutes. And it's it's a whole, it, you know, and then, then look at property management. It's just the way it's been done for 500 years. Um, but if you really look at the lease lock option, it doesn't make sense anymore to use. We have made that antiquated. Why manage big security deposits and take the stuff from renters? Why um, why ask for co-signers when you have an established company like ours with that is backed by a four billion dollar insurance fund that is always going to indemnify you for everything and pay for damages? It's it's just we're we're hoping everyone has that aha moment that you know 
our biggest property management companies have had and says, ah, okay, this makes more sense than doing it the old way. No, I was just going to say that we essentially, I, I've run into that the entire time I've been in real estate, is that the answer you always get, why are we doing it? It's always been done that way. So I, you hit the nail right on the head. And we actually got away from security deposits in the beginning. We didn't even, we just charged moving fees. But then when someone had really bad credit, we would ask, essentially ask for more. And that would be a risk fee. Because we were, we were essentially self-insuring, but after we ran the numbers on lease lock versus you know self-insuring, we're still not able to, as to your point, you're backed by a $4 billion insurance fund. We can't you know make up if we charge one month's rent risk fee. Well, guess what? That's probably not going to cover it. So we're more covered with lease lock, and that's why after we really looked at it, we felt better about you know lease lock than even doing the risk fees. Yeah, we, we were recently, um, we, when I talk about a $4 billion fund, that means that lease lock is reinsured. Mm -hmm. uh, lease lock is part of, you know, we, we walk into the reinsurance market just like Geico does, just like USAA does. We're in that market all the time looking for cheaper and cheaper reinsurance for our insurance uh, reserves. And we have to reinsure those reserves that we have by law. And so, and we have to be able to cover all claims. And um, we were just recently able to, through the use of reinsurance, bring our rates down to 7% of a full lease value. And then through, because our reserves built up, now we're able to finance that for the renter. So it's really three and a half percent of the full lease value that the renter has to pay up front. It's always cheaper than one month extra deposit that you're gonna charge as a landlord. And what are you gonna do when you get a renter who squats and sits in there or your property is open for two months because you can't find the new renter, that one month rent that you collected is gonna go away really fast. Um, but with lease lock, you're gonna keep getting checks while the apartment's empty. Um, you're, you're, and God forbid you go through an eviction and the, the person sits in there for the full 90 days before the sheriff's allowed to knock on the door, especially in a state like New York or California where they can drag it out. You, you're going to be getting checks from lease lock while that eviction is happening where you're going to get nothing. Uh, and you're going, to, you know, you're going to get court filing fees from lease lock. You know, as part of your claim, you're going to get reimbursed. It's, it's just, it's, it's, it makes more sense. Jake, it's funny you said that because I think lease, lease lock also brings in a little level of protection or level of less confrontation between the owner and between the, the, the tenant because that's why we moved away from security deposits. Jake always felt that there was a level of confrontation after 12 months the tenant wants the security back. Are you going to hold the security? You're not going to hold the security. We didn't want that adversary. They're always in the back of their mind tenant. thinking, am I going to get it? Am I not? And we were never the type to hold it, but there was always that weird tension in that relationship with the security deposit. So I never liked that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Why, why deal uh, in, in security deposits if you don't have to? We ask our landlords to hold the least amount of security deposit possible. It's funny. Um, a lot zero. of our landlords... They don't want to let it go, and they want to hold $99. No. And, you know, we always say, look, when, there's a, when a claim comes in, we're going we're gonna to cover you up to a half a month's rent and damages. So if it's a $1,500 lease per month, you're going to get – you have a $750 limit that we're going to cover for damages. And if you hold $99, and we, we – obviously we know about it because it's on the insurance certificate, we're going to subtract that – that benefit to you by $99. So why? But they still want to do it. Mm -hmm. And, you know, we, we, uh, we, we roll with it because um, we, we just think it's a matter of time before everyone kind of goes, oh, okay, um, right now uh, with cl claims, I just want to say something about claims. I, am, I have everyone in the office poised to pay claims lightning fast. We're, we're, we don't give anyone a hard time. Um, we're paying full amounts right away with um, minimal proof. We're, we're really trusting our landlords. Um, we, our, our default rate right now, guys, is less than 1%. Um, so we're underwriting very well. We're getting really, really good um, at predicting and being able to call you guys up and go, you don't want this person. They're going to default, and it's going to be a big problem. But we're, we're getting really good at it, and um, it's, it's – uh, it's really important to us right now to to really pay claims fast. We want to prove out um, our worth and our value, and really for you guys, that's claims. When you file a claim, you got to get paid, and so that's that's how I have everyone thinking in the office right now, and it's really working because when we do pay a claim, people love it. 
Jake, this sounds like the story of every industry. You know what pops into my mind? College. College pops into my mind. Everyone thinks you need to go to a four-year university. And this is just like resonating so much with me that people are just stuck in their old thoughts. And if they don't get out of their old thoughts, they're going to be left behind. So I- I'm excited that we had this this call. Um, how-, how big is your company? How many, uh, how many um, guys have you signed up so far? Yeah, so uh, we have now o- o- over 700,000 units uh, enrolled in LeaseLock. Wow. And um, we are, if you look at, you know, our largest uh, property management company has over 400,000 units um, in their ownership and control. They're the, the, the master major, you know. Everybody else has like 25,000 to 30,000. Our student uh, section has like 10 to 15,000 beds uh, on average. And um, like for our biggest, our biggest guy, uh, we they're doing about um, let's see they're doing about 350,000 applications a year. 30% of those are conditional, and so they have their computer set up now where the first choice it's it says you've been conditionally approved. Here are your choices: lease lock, put down this amount of money in extra deposit, which is always more expensive than lease lock, um, or go get a co-signer who can qualify. And so more than not, those conditional approvals are hitting the lease lock button. Mm-hmm. Um, I have, I have, uh, uh, we're growing really rapidly. Uh, in December of 2016, I had two major property management companies signed up across the country. I have over 30 now, guys. And it's only been another five, six months. Wow. Uh, it's really catching on. Uh, I have 11 employees now. Uh, back in December, I had four. <laughs> so... Uh, we're just we're growing like a weed, and um, it's super exciting. And we're only hiring people here who are really passionate about the program. We're hiring people who have a sense of um, of you know social morality and um, really helping people get back on their feet. We love that aspect of it. We're helping people who are financially keen. Uh, are, we're hiring people who are financially keen uh, who who want to push our point of view. Our point of view is um, get away from the old way of doing things and move on to a financially responsible way of handling your potential defaults. And um, that's what everyone in the company is pushing at the same time. And it's been like a really successful recipe uh, to get everyone on the same page like that because I hear it. I, I work, we work in an open office. Um, Derek and I are not tucked away in like a CEO office or whatever. We are, we sit in the office with everyone else in a big room and I, and we listen to everything. We hear everything. People can yell at us at, at any second and ask us a question. It's a um, constant open dialogue and communication. I feel like we're a new type of company in that way. Um, and, we answer questions really fast for our employees, and I can hear everyone, the way they talk to customers, to uh, renters, to property managers, to leasing desks, and we all speak with the same point of view, and that's what I love. So um, I, I, I love this company, obviously. <laughs> Keep I'm an eye on them, man. <laughs> that's good. Yeah. How, many, how many years have you been doing that? When, how many years ago did you start the company? So... So that thing happened to me in 2010 when I got denied. And in um, 2011, I made a little website called LeaseLock. And um, I had just started law school too. And I, and I was doing law school at night. And I, I, um, I put up this website and I basically said, I'm a stranger and I'm going to co-sign for you on your lease. If you, sh- if you pay me and if you show me um, your bank statements, your credit report, and let me talk to your past employer and your past landlord, those four things. And I got hundreds of applications in and it kind of went around by word of mouth and I picked a dozen over about three months. I charged 10% of the lease value. I picked a dozen that I thought were winners and nobody defaulted in the whole year and I made about 40 grand in, in three months and then I said okay this is a business and that's when I took it to uh, Mucker and when Mucker put me in touch with some insurance lawyers they said you know what Riken, this is awesome and you can run this like a financial guarantee but as this gets big you're gonna get shut down 
because some de department of insurance is going to look at you and say, you know what, you're really practicing insurance because you are uh, you're setting um, premium based on risk. He goes, you're not calling it that, but they're going to call it that. And then you're paying claims when a, a, um, a coverage event happens. And, you know, they're telling me all these insurance terms. And, I, and they said, you have to really you need to turn this into an insurance company. So you should really just stop what you're doing, set up the proper channels, become compliant in insurance, and then you never have to worry about anything. And that's 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 when I brought on Derek. Mucker found Derek for me. He had just uh, sold a mobile advertising company to AT&T and right out of Berkeley. And he's 10 years younger than I am and I think twice as smart. And um, we we worked together to turn this into an insurance company. So and raise and he knew how to raise money. I didn't. I was. It's old. it's funny you just said that because Jake is ten years younger than me and twice as smart as me. So yeah, right. We have that in common <laughs> at least. <laughs> you can relate. Listen, the reason why I asked that question is I want all the listeners out there to hear that it's been six years. He hasn't just got up one day out of bed and said, "Okay, I'm going to get this company. I'm going to have seven hundred thousand people, property managers." It takes time, and all those actions create more actions and more actions. And six years later, he's got eleven employees. So anybody listening to this, thinking about buying a multifamily or investing, it doesn't happen overnight. It takes a long time. It takes envision, inspiration. It takes, I guess, his motivation. He's moving towards pleasure. He's got this huge ideal and I think that's what makes him successful and the fact that he can stick in there for six years is, is truly a testament to uh, the success of the company yeah and it's not um, it's you know you can be uh, CEO for the past probably five years of the six years has been sucky uh, it sounded glamorous but I had no money and everything I ha I've had to put into the company Derek and I didn't start paying ourselves until about uh, 16 months ago so it wasn't glamorous it was we scraped by um, I was living partly on student loans because I was going to school at night I finally graduated law school in the middle of all this stuff so it was and passed the bar somehow so it, it's just like all we we have worked our butts off and that's so true what you're saying there's no it never comes easy I don't care it never comes easy and you can never do it on your own. You always get help. And, you know, there are so many people, if I could, if I could run a list of people who I could thank along the way who have just done a little bit to help me or give me legal advice and didn't charge me or whatever, I, I wouldn't be here without any of that. Mm -hmm. I love that. What is the best, uh, I guess, leasing tip for the listeners out there? The best what tip? Leasing tip. Um... The best leasing tip for renters or property managers? I guess both. Take both of them. Um, you know, for renters, I would say, um, you know, if you are, if you're in a situation where you think it would help you to have your credit improved by having your rent payments reported to the credit bureaus and you don't want to walk into a leasing office scared, walk into a lease lock office, go to the, go to our website. There's a, a map of the whole U.S. and you can pick the property that you want to live in. It and by the way, it's expanding every day by six, seven, eight properties a day. Um, we're we're um, you know that that's what you should do. I think for landlords, it's the advice that we talked. What you were saying, you know, get out of your head because there there are other ways to do things than the way that all of your competitors are doing it, and there's a better way. And eventually. I, from what we believe and what we are seeing, and we're dealing with the smartest guy, guys and girls in, in property management. And um, they are, these are the top executives who are signing on to lease lock going, why have, you know, why are we going to do the old way when we have this? This is, forget it. And so um, eventually we believe the only way you're going to be competitive is to use lease lock. So get on board now. And, and you know, reduce your default losses down to zero, make smart decisions, send, train, your, um, train your leasing desks to send the right people to lease lock when it's time. And um, I think everybody wins in the end and, I, and it's because the renter pays for their own risk. Mm -hmm. Very cool. Uh, so just general business stuff, what is your best habit for success on a daily basis? So 6 a.m. push-ups, bro. Come on. What are you doing? Time, time management. Yeah. Um, 
write it down. If you think of it, like I have a list in my kitchen. If I run out of something, I, you know, if it's bananas, you write bananas down. But that's just in the kitchen. If you're thinking, always have some paper on you because I always write stuff down. And when I get to work, I, I take whatever I wrote down and I put it somewhere in my calendar. So now it's been marked as a time and I get it done. And it's just time management. It's like, I'm just like that as a person. This weekend, I had a bunch of family over for Memorial Day, but don't think I wasn't sneaking lawn, loads of laundry in in the middle of it because I know I wasn't going to be able to do it this week. You just got to like fit it in where you can and just stay sharp and try to get get it done. This, you know, we we never wanted to manage a lot of employees, um, but we are now. It's getting bigger. Our our enrollment team is. Uh, we've had to really hammer down time management with our enrollment team because there's so much to do. These are very complex relationships to manage. There are a lot of different personalities in there. And we've got everyone now really into writing everything down, taking notes, making sure to follow up and just manage your time. That's my, my best advice. Um, favorite business book. What are you recommending to folks? Oh God, play bigger, play bigger. Um, this, this book, it was written by, um, the big wigs, the, the, the guys who started the, the yahoos, um, Tesla and, and all of them. It, it was actually the consultants for all those businesses, these big businesses. And they all got together. There's four of them, I believe that got together and wrote this book. And it, it talks about what I was saying before, the only, the, the only way to the only way to win in the business world today is become the king of your category and you don't have to be first you don't have to be the one to create the category you just have to be best at it and so um, it, we, I could look at you know uh, insurant in New York they were doing this before Lee was doing it but I believe that uh, you know now when insurant we have people calling us saying that insurant said to call Lee Lock and because they handle more you know more states and i i think that lease lock is approaching this in a way to create a category insurance doesn't call this rent payment insurance we have coined the term at lease lock rent payment insurance something that never existed before it's a cat it's a new category it never existed and we want to be the king of that category and so we all have to have and, it, and the book goes, I, I could recite the book, but it goes into the point of view. Everyone in the, in the company has to have the same point of view to push the category. And um, it, this, this, again, written by really smart guys. Derek turned me on to the book. We got a copy for everyone in the company, and everyone has read it now. And um, great book. Very cool. Let's sell some lease lock. Uh, you know, how can people get a hold of you? Who should they be calling? Let's, uh, let's get some people signed up this week. Yeah, the number is easy. It's 844-LET-LEASE, 844-LET-LEASE. Uh, you can go to our website at leaselock.com, um, and you can click on Enroll right on the uh, first page and start an enrollment application. You're going to be contacted um, immediately. It better be immediately. Uh, we're going we're we're to come to that call center and get you. We'll be watching, right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you're going um, to be contacted immediately. Uh, by the enrollment team, and uh, they're going to help you through the electronic forms just to get signed up. It's all done electronically. Um, if you call us, uh, you're never going to get an answering machine. We pick up the phone and we talk to you right away. You're not put on hold. Um, so uh, we're we're that that's how you enroll. Once you enroll, we're going to issue you an insurance policy, and the insurance policy is going to have your name on it, and it's uh, good in perpetuity. It's good forever. Uh, every time a renter signs up for a lease lock, we're going to slip a rider onto your policy, and it's going to be there until the end of the lease, and then it's going to slip back out of the policy. And the, the, you know, however number of lease locks you have on your policy doesn't matter. It's unlimited. Um, but you know, as long as it's attached to that policy, which we do on our end, we keep track of all that. Um, we can give statements, but. Um, as long as that rider is attached to that policy, you are covered. I feel I feel your pain, and I can tell you're going through your systems right now as you scale at your company because your answer was beautiful. 
They better be because when you talked about them calling you back immediately, because you know we're 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 in the same thing. We're we're building our companies. You know, you go through, you put these systems in place, and they're supposed to be followed. So the system is there. They better be calling back because you you created it. But it's it's all that accountability, following through, make sure people are doing what they're supposed to be doing. So I feel your pain, brother. <laughs> I know what you're going through. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know, um, it changes so fast. The yeah, we have a student housing group that. Uh, they want to renew student housing two months after the student moves in the first lease. And they want to get them to renew for the next year within 60 days. And so, Great. you know, our lease lock decisions are only good for 30 days. Um, if, if after 30 days we need to re-underwrite you because you may have bought a house or got your car repossessed or we want, you know, we want to know. So we made a new policy that um, – the lease lock decision is good for 90 days so that we could accommodate those student housing people. And now it's a new company wide policy for stu- only for student, but for renewals. And, you know, when we create a policy like that, we got to make sure you don't just send out an email to the whole company. You get everyone together and you go, look, this is the way we're going to do it. Christina, when you're training with your training team, the leasing desk, you need to mention that now that we offer that jump you know uh chris in underwriting when you're when with your underwriting team you need to make sure that underwriters know that the decision is good for 90 instead of 30 days so that you don't reject them right away you got to change whatever's in the computer system that might reject them and so every time something like that changes it's like it's a big deal down it's got to be it's got we have rule books so we call them playbooks and so every team has a playbook and you got to write the new rule it's like new rule day like here here it comes and it, it hurts because then, <laughs> then Ricardo over in programming goes, fuck. You know, <laughs> Come on, <laughs> man. <laughs> You're killing me. <laughs> and he's like, okay. And then he, he doesn't just have to fix it in the program. He's got to figure out every single place where that is going to affect you know, everything that, that happens because we're doing everything by computer. So he's got to fix everybody's system. And so – I yeah, love I, this though because there's you know, so much that goes into business and making something that actually works and from the outside looking in looks professional and everything. But all the shit that's going on behind the scenes to get to that point, you know, you, I have a little more, um, how do I say this? I'm a little more understanding of times now when I'm in a business and I see something that may not be exactly the way I want it because there's so much that goes into making something run fluid, you know, and smooth that, uh, I don't know, just. Uh, I yeah, appreciate what you, you said there, I guess. We kind of got off on a, a tangent. But, uh, Gina, what, what else you got for him today? That's it. I just want people to at least have an open mind. I mean, yep. at least at least contact them. Um, we've got a lot of guys that, that listen to the show that's all about multifamily. Just have an open mind. I mean, when you hear the whole, the whole I guess, the goal, the security deposit thing, people are so versatile. Just have an open mind. Go to their website. Check out their website. Get on the phone with Bruce or Derek. You know, ask them about it, and then if you want to hit us up, Jake and Gino, we'll let you know how we feel. We like, we love the policy. We've only been on it for a couple of months, so um, open mind and get in touch with them. Cool, very wow, good. Thanks, guys. We don't, we don't get this kind of, we, we don't, we don't have a huge advertising budget, but you know, this, this helps. Listen, Thank we you. don't. Oh, here's awesome. the thing, you know, a lot of the the different shows out there, like anti sales. Look, you know, we're not here if we don't make sales. If someone doesn't rent for, rent from our apartments, we're not going to be here. So. Bring it on. We're all about it if we like the product. So, man, awesome. Yeah, Appreciate definitely. the time today. Right, and thanks you, for a great call. Appreciate yours. Thank you. Have a great day. All right. Thanks. Thanks.